Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. This is a live broadcast from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Thursday, September 24th, 2009. It's 11.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time in the U.S. It's 4.30 p.m. in London and Mexico City. It's 10.30 a.m. If you need to reach us during the broadcast, you can phone in toll-free at 1-866-67-CADEX. Overseas, our AOL instant mail address is CADEX TV. A um, little update on some uh, stories that are going on as, uh, as we're going to go into our reinsurance stories. Uh, the President is still at the United Nations as we speak. He chaired a meeting this morning of the Security Council. He's heading to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which is about uh, 300 miles to the west. Uh, at Pittsburgh, the group of 20 uh, leaders are, are meeting and uh, they're going to be convening later this afternoon, this evening for dinner, and then a working session tomorrow. Uh, as expected, the uh, discussions are going to center on climate change and the EU financial proposal that was uh, released yesterday that we reported on, as well as a host of other issues. The President's had a very busy few days. Yesterday when we came on the air, we reported that Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi was delivering a speech at the UN. He had an allotted 15 minutes. He spoke for an hour and a half in a rambling address that uh, had people getting up, walking around, walking out, walking back in, and several times he told the crowd to behave and stop talking and listen to him. It was a very unusual theater, not our news. In London, there's some good news coming out of Lloyd's at 1 Lime Street. Uh, the flat claims environment and good investment conditions in the first half of 09 pushed aggregate pre-tax profits at Lloyd's up to about 1.3 billion pounds from 949 million pounds the previous year. Lloyd CEO Richard Ward made the announcement, reflecting half-year results for individual Lloyd's insurers. Uh, the market results also feature good top-line growth, with gross written premium surging from about 9.98 billion pounds up to 13.46 billion pounds for the six months to the end of June. That's a record course is widely reported the impact of exchange rate movements, primarily between the dollar and the pound. Uh, Lloyd said that the 35 percent increase was attributable to increasing demand for Lloyd security and a flight to quality from both brokers and policyholders wanting to use the Lloyd's platform. Lloyd said that the premiums were booked at average rates of $1.50 U.S. to one pound. This was uh, compared to $1.98 to one pound uh, in 2008. Also, of course, uh, the discussion that we mentioned yesterday about many people being concerned about credit risk, uh, seeking greater syndication and uh, greater participation of different parties on risks. Uh, in Baltimore, the NAIC uh, is making some news. Uh, they've approved a uh, bill that's going to be uh, given to the Congress, hopefully for introduction. It's called the Reinsurance Regulatory Modernization Act of 2009. According to uh, the New Hampshire Insurance Commissioner, Roger Sevegny, who is the chairman of the uh, committee that worked on it, the NAIC has endorsed the proposed federal legislation to facilitate cross-border reinsurance transactions while ensuring that U.S. insurers and policyholders are adequately protected against the risk of insolvency. The legislation would create two new classes of reinsurers in the United States. There would be national reinsurers, who are American reinsurers, and there are so-called port-of-entry reinsurers who are non-U.S. reinsurers. In order to transact reinsurance business in the U.S., national reinsurers would be licensed through a single home state. Port-of-entry reinsurers would be certified through a single port-of-entry state. Reinsurers would continue to have the option of operating under the existing regulatory approach rather than submit to this. The legislation also provides for the establishment of the Reinsurance Supervision Review Board. This would be a federal entity. It would be responsible for evaluating states and non-U.S. jurisdictions. State insurance supervisors would be responsible for evaluating their respective national and port of entry reinsurers. They would also still stick with establishing appropriate collateral requirements for reinsurance agreements. State laws with credit for reinsurance requirements different from the federal legislation would be preempted as to national and port of entry reinsurers. There's the meat of the matter right there. That's the big one. Some economic news came out today from the U.S. Department of Labor. First-time claims for state unemployment benefits fell to their lowest level since July. 
The number of initial claims in the week ending the 19th of September fell 21,000 down to 530,000. Wall Street had been expecting 550,000. Uh, stock market's up about 41 points right now. There were some other bad news, apparently. The uh, home sales uh, dropped. They uh, did not rise as expected. The uh, insurance bill is coming due in Georgia from all that rain. Flooding in the northern part of the state has caused about $250 million worth of damage to property and tens of millions of dollars in damage to infrastructure. This is according to no less than an authority than the state insurance commissioner, John Oxendine himself. Commissioner Oxendine uh, toured the area by helicopter. He said, quote, I spent some time surveying damage this afternoon. I believe the damage total will easily reach $250 million. He went on to say many of the homeowners afflicted by this event don't have flood insurance. Reuters reported that parts of Interstate 20 that runs through downtown Atlanta remain closed this morning during the rush hour. Reuters also reported that at least 20 bridges, including some over the highway, appeared to be damaged. The superintendent said that there was a lot of water pressure building up on those bridges, and that's a major concern. The governor of Georgia, Sonny Perdue, asked President Obama last night to declare a state of emergency for Georgia. Meanwhile, in Sydney, Australia, here's an interesting picture. I don't know if you can see this or not, but on the right-hand side is a woman with a camera in the center, and on the left, through that haze, is in fact the Sydney Opera House right there on Sydney Harbor. Australia is cleaning up today. Um, the worst dust storm in decades smothered Sydney. It caused an estimated tens of millions of dollars in lost productivity. Uh, millions of tons of dust blew in from the desert outback, caked the city in orange powder. Health experts said that the danger from air pollution had passed, but that the uh, economic damage in lost working hours and agricultural topsoil remains to be calculated. The, closure, uh, the storm forced the closure of Sydney construction, flight, Sydney construction sites and played havoc with air travel with international flight diversions causing long delays. A Mark Goodsell from the Australian Industry Group said, I think it's in the tens of millions of dollars, referring to economic losses. He said the airport delays would cost millions and much of the building industry shut down for the day. That's expensive. Then there's absenteeism and lost revenue and hospitality. He said there's also a big cleanup. Everybody's got to clean their houses, especially people like me who left their windows open. God forbid. Well, here's interesting news, and you knew this was coming as uh, former New York governor and uh, former New York Attorney General Elliot Spitzer begins to become uh, more of a public figure since his resignation in disgrace uh, a while back. Um, Mr. Spitzer has made some comments, and uh, an acute observer of news events is none other than Maurice Hank Greenberg, and he's picked up on it. Mr. Greenberg is the former CEO of AIG. He's asked a New York judge to dismiss a lawsuit brought in 2005 by then State Attorney General Elliot Spitzer. Mr. Greenberg accused Spitzer of using the case to promote his political career. This is according to a filing uh, Mr. Greenberg filed in New York State Supreme Court. Mr. Greenberg's attorney said, quote, at that time Spitzer was planning to run for governor of the state of New York and he has since admitted that his high profile pursuit of Greenberg achieved its intended objective of enhancing his reputation as he pursued higher office. Spitzer, of course, accused Greenberg and Howard Smith, AIG's then CFO, of using sham reinsurance deals to distort AIG's financial health. Stock market uh, remains up about 42 points. We'll go to a word from our sponsors. Every day, the world wakes up and goes to work, pursuing the unique opportunities that lead the global economy forward. The complexity and close connectivity of today's global marketplace is a true modern miracle that can create unparalleled success. But it takes confidence, passion, innovation, and understanding. Enabling opportunity. Protecting capital. Engineering innovation. Investing in your future. Ensuring continuity. Finding the right balance. It takes Aeon. 